Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Welcome to worship with St. John Lutheran Church and those who are viewing our video. We look today at the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue with authority and he heals by casting out unclean spirits. Let's see, I should advance this one. Just a note for those who are viewing at home. If you consult a pamphlet that has come to you in the email or can be found on the church's website, there are reference to hymn numbers because you can sing at home even though we can't sing here. Um, but you're welcome to do that if you'd like. Uh, no other announcements to start. Please stand as you're able and we'll begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. reading from Deuteronomy. 
Moses said, The Lord your God will, will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsibly. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, and in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, the one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we are all through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust, and lifts the needy from the ash heap. Alleluia. 
The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. For those who sat in the shadow of death, light has dawned. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So today I want to talk about that second reading from 1 Corinthians. And it may seem a confusing reading because it's, it's kind of out of context and, and it's a context that we're not familiar with because there are no uh, temples down the street where you could buy food that's been sacrificed to idols. So let me give a little background and, and then talk about how it, it teaches us today, that this passage is, is an important teaching for us today, especially in the 21st century, when we get confused about freedom and license and liberty. All these words get mixed up in our mind and we are led astray. But first, the, the context of 1 Corinthians. Paul is writing to this community, this Christian church in Corinth, and apparently they have addressed him with some questions. So if you look at the text that's in your pamphlet, um, you'll see that there are some words in quotes. And biblical scholars think that those words in quotes are things that Paul is quoting from a letter he received from the Corinthians. So he's quoting back to them what they have said to him. We don't have that letter. But clearly, they're asking questions. Are we allowed to eat food that's been sacrificed to false gods? So here's my example from Bible study. For those who have come to Bible study, you've heard this before. Let's imagine that down the street, there's a temple to Apollo. To, to Apollo. To Apollo. It's the, the temple of Apollo. And across the street from the temple of Apollo is a restaurant called Apollo Burgers. Because at the temple of Apollo, people bring their their offerings. And it, in Paul's day, those offerings would have been sheep, and goats, maybe even cattle that would have been sacrificed on the altar of Apollo. But not entirely. There would have been parts left that would have been used in worship service. And then there would have been parts that were sold across the street at the restaurant Apollo Burgers. The people in Corinth are asking, we know that this meat has come from the temple of Apollo. Can we have Apollo burgers? They make really good burgers. Can we eat there? That's what they're asking Paul. And he quotes back some of these lines. All of us possess knowledge, and no idol in the world really exists, and there is no God but one, and food will not bring us close to God or presumably take us far from God. These are the things that they're writing to Paul. We, we know all these things, but can you give us some guidance? Some of us think it's fine to eat Apollo burgers because we know that there is no God Apollo. He's just an idol, a false god. He doesn't really exist. But others are really concerned because if we're seen eating Apollo burgers, does that mean that we have some connection to Apollo and the uh, temple of Apollo across the street? That's the question that Paul is trying to address here. And that's the context for that question. Paul is concerned both for those who know that Apollo is not a real god and there is no real thing happening in that temple, but also those whose consciences are troubled by eating Apollo burgers. And in that concern for both sides, Paul brings us 
an important teaching that we might understand the difference between freedom and license, that we might understand what Christian liberty is over against the liberty of the secular world. To start, my daughter just recently took and passed her driver's road test. And she now has the freedom, the legal, the legal freedom, to drive on the roads of Janesville when she borrows mom and dad's car. But, and she has literally a license, right? A license to drive. But she doesn't have license in a philosophical sense to do whatever she wants, right? That's why she took that driver's road test, so that those who would issue her card that would recognize her freedom to drive on the roads in Wisconsin knew that she would follow the rules. Even in our freedom, we follow the rules. And that's the difference between license, that is philosophical license, the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want, and freedom that connects us to a system or an ethic or a guide some kind of rule. My daughter has the freedom to drive on the roads of Janesville, to maintain the speed limits that are posted, to observe the stop signs and the traffic lights, to observe all the traffic laws. And if she fails to observe those rules and laws, that freedom will be taken from her. She does not have license to speed down Milton Avenue at 200 miles an hour. The car she drives can't go 200 miles an hour anyway, thankfully. The difference between license and freedom. That's what Paul is talking about here. Some in that Corinthian congregation are, are, are going to assert, well, we could do whatever we want because we have been given freedom in Christ. And others are going to say, but there are, there are rules, and, and how do we determine when we should follow the rules or not follow the rules? Martin Luther wrote a treatise in 1520, quite a while ago, entitled The Freedom of a Christian. And it begins this way. In order to point out an easier way for common folk, for I serve them only, I am proposing two themes concerning the freedom and servitude of the spirit. The Christian individual is a completely free Lord of all, subject to none. The Christian individual is a completely dutiful servant of all, subject to all. Luther continues, although these topics appear to contradict one another, nevertheless, if they can be found to be in agreement, they will serve our purposes beautifully. Both are from the Apostle Paul when he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, for though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all. And in Romans chapter 13, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. But love by its very nature is dutiful and serves the one who is loved. The same was true of Christ, who, although Lord of all, was nevertheless born of a woman, born under the law, and who was at the same time free and slave, that is, at the same time in the form of God and in the form of a slave. Luther points out to us that we struggle with this balance between complete license, that is, we are completely free Lord of all, subject to none, and freedom, which binds us to someone or something, completely dutiful servant of all, and subject to all. And if we go back to Paul, we learn from Paul that we are, be, we are, be, we are to be directed by our commitment, by our relationship, by our faith in Jesus Christ. Tucked into all that conversation about Apollo burgers and eating food to sacrifice to idols and all these sort of things, Paul makes an important, note, important point, the one that we should hear that travels across the centuries to this 21st century. He writes, there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, for whom we exist. And one Lord, the word Lord means master, the one in charge, the boss, one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, all, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. 
the midst of all that talk about food sacrifice to idols, we might miss Paul's assertion. The center of all for Christians is God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we choose to act in the world, even from the freedom that we are given in Christ, we act in a certain way for a reason. We may choose to act for the sake of others. That's not a bad way to go, right? Because we think we know, because we judge, uh, I'm sorry, we may choose, choose to act for the sake of ourselves. I should start with ourselves, because that's the selfish one that comes easily to us, right? Because we think we know, because we judge by our own standards, so that we might have some self-esteem. And we make ourselves our own Lord. Think about the world in which we live and the things that people do. And they do it because it feels good to them and it seems right to them. And, and so they come into conflict. And they exhibit the problem of license, doing whatever they think is right. Another way, we might choose to act in a certain way for the sake of others. That's the, that's the next one, right? And that one seems to better appeal to us. And Christians often fall in this category, but I think they shouldn't. To choose to act in a certain way for the sake of others. Because what happens is, too soon, we want them to be impressed by us, to judge us in a certain way. We want to be admired by them. And we make ourselves slaves to them. They become our Lord by what they judge us by how they see us and the declarations they make about us. Paul's way is that we should choose to act in a certain way for the sake of God, for God's sake. There is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. We are called to relationship with God first. Love the Lord our God with our all. But here's what happens when we hear God that we love. He sends us out to love our neighbor as ourselves. He directs us to consider the other. He sends us out to be concerned so that the boundaries around us are our love for our neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself, we are told in the scriptures. But lest we think that the measure of all things comes back to ourselves again then, Jesus becomes the example. Jesus teaches, love one another as I have loved you. What is Paul's answer to this dilemma of freedom? The freedom to eat Apollo burgers, to eat food offered to idols, to do whatever it is in this day we might be inclined to do. He says, take care that this liberty, that f this freedom of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. We look out for the others around us who are looking at us. We have great disdain for parents to do one thing and tell their children to do another, right? Do as I say, not as I do. We, we disdain that notion. That is what Paul is saying here. Make sure that you are doing what you would tell the other to do. Take care that this freedom of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. If you sin against a member of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ, Paul says. And so regarding the Apollo burger, regarding the food offered to idols, Paul says, I would just completely give up eating meat if I thought it would cause someone else to fall, to fall away from relationship with God. There is Paul's example to us of what Christian freedom looks like, a freedom that is a dutiful servant of all, subject to all, who is free in Christ to love God and love neighbor and demonstrate the very presence of Christ in one's life. What a difference that is from the license that the world would lift up to us. A civil liberty that demands that we get to do whatever. A liberty in Christ connects us to God who sends us out in love for Jesus' sake. Amen.
please stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be with you always. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, for all the baptized, and especially Catherine Pazansky, Nancy Hawkinson, Gina Maz, Leonard Duckworth, and Leonard Morikow. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works and creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, especially Ruth, the family of Doris, Kim, Penny, Ron, Larry, Carleen, Jennifer, Mary Ellen, John, Ada, Terry, Judy, Jean, Carl, Lorraine, Virginia, Bill, Roseanne, Judy, Al, Lorenzo, Carol, Melanie, Jody, Dick, Chris, Wanda, Jessica, Janet, Annette, Lois, Karen, Patty, Bev, Jennifer, all those affected by COVID-19, and those who name now silently or aloud. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, when we consider the gift of your only son for us, we are embarrassed for the gifts we bring. Therefore, we pray for faith to give ourselves more generous, generously to those in need, more like your unsparing love for us. 
grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard does not know, nor does the fool understand. You, O Lord, are exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Of my horn you have exalted, like the horns of wild bulls. I am anointed with fresh oil. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like the cedar of Lebanon. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and that this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints and light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Receive and be fed. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we recite together the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me 
in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy, for you have seen my affliction, you know my distress. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Nourished with the sacrament of our redemption, we ask you, Lord, that by its saving power, true faith may always grow and prosper. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Just uh, one important thing to point out in the yellow page, and I'll let you look through the other things as they pertain to you. This Sunday, uh, we're going to call our annual congregation meeting to order at 1015. Um, you can attend either live um, here in the nave or through the Zoom link that is printed in the yellow page. It also went out in emails. Um, make sure that you tune into that a little bit before 1015. Don't just arrive at 1015. Um, and make sure you have the software downloaded ahead of time. So that's the annual meeting this coming Sunday, January 31st, 10.15 a.m. Otherwise, take note of the other things that are printed there, mod pizza things, uh, notices about vaccinations, other things like that. A closing prayer before I dismiss it. Oh God, you know of the perilous choices we are prone to make in which our frail humanity cannot survive. Visit and support us with your word of truth, that we may grow when we suffer in our sin. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.